Hello, I'm not Chuck. This is part three of the series that I'm doing on the design and construction of a home weather station. In this part, I need to warn you about some linear power regulator modules that have damaged my electronics and could damage yours. I also want to show you a working breadboard of my weather station that reads and displays temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, and ambient light. In part two of this series, I presented a modular unit to interface between the 10-watt solar panel and the electronics in the outdoor portion of the weather station. The assembled module has four primary functions. First, the larger PCB in the center is an MPPT solar controller. It measures the input voltage from the solar panel, and if it is 12 volts or more, the controller outputs a voltage that is set by adjusting the blue potentiometer. Because the power for the outdoor portion of the weather station comes from two lithium iron phosphate 18650 batteries in series, the controller is set to output 8.4 volts. Second, in addition to charging the LiPo batteries, the 8.4 volts are fed into the input of two AMS 1117 linear voltage regulators. The one on the left outputs 5 volts, and the one on the right outputs 3.3 volts. One or both of these voltages will be needed for the microcontroller and the sensors in the weather station. This is an ESP8266 microcontroller board. I had planned to use this MCU, but am also considering the Raspberry Pi Pico. Both can be programmed with MicroPython. Third, a small but very important function is performed by the Schottky diode. It allows voltage from the solar panel to enter the charge controller, but prevents voltage from flowing to the solar panel and possibly discharging the LiPo batteries. Fourth, the module also serves as a hub for all power and ground connections in the weather station. Removal of the two shunts isolates the batteries and the solar panel for testing and maintenance. Unfortunately, even though the module seemed to perform as expected, I was forced to make some design changes. Here are the reasons why. While working on another project, the RPI Pico Pack, I discovered that the AMS 1117-5 regulator board was prone to overheating, especially when there was a large difference between the input and output voltage. And the worst part of the failure was that when the board failed, it caused the failure of the microcontroller that was connected to it. After the first failure, without really thinking it through, I got another regulator module and another RPI Pico and tried again and got the same result. It was obvious that I needed to know more about the failures of the AMS modules, so I decided to do some testing. But first, I performed some research which allowed me to draw a schematic of the 1117-5 module. As you can see, it's a very simple circuit. I connected a module to a well-filtered and regulated 13.8 volt power source and loaded the output with a 30 ohm 15 watt resistor. I set the buck regulator to output close to 6 volts and measured the voltage across the resistor. It was just about 4.8 volts. I gradually increased the input voltage and recorded the results. Here's a table of all my measurements and calculations. You can see that as the input voltage increased up to 9 volts, the output crept to over 5 volts. Then, the output began to fall as I cranked the input to over 13 volts. But that lack of stability was far from the worst problem. At no time did the power to be dissipated exceed 1.29 watts, and that was with the input voltage at almost 13.5 volts. At that voltage, the thermocouple connected to the tab of the AMS 1117-5 IC showed a rapid increase in temperature. At 70 degrees C, it failed catastrophically, smoked, and its output shot up to 13.5 volts. No wonder that my two RPI Pico boards no longer work. I had relied on the 1117 ICs to shut down before they failed. 
After all, that's what the data sheet said would happen, and I certainly didn't expect them to pass the full input voltage to the output, but they did. Thus, the conclusion is obvious. The modules that I bought were built using defective, or more likely, counterfeit AMS 1117-5 ICs. Not only did I lose those, I also ruined two RPI Picos. So my advice to you is to carefully test any 1117 modules that you have before actually putting them into service. So what regulator have I chosen to use instead? It's called a Mini 360 and is an adjustable switching regulator. Of course, changing voltage regulators required a new printed circuit board for the solar charge controller and power supplies. Fortunately, I know how to get great printed circuit boards in the best way possible, the PCB way. I got 10 of these boards from PCB Way for only $5 plus tax and shipping. From the time I uploaded the Gerber files, it was just a bit over a week until I received the new boards. PCB Way offers a variety of colors, including the common green, but I've chosen white boards with black silk screen ink for my last few projects. I really like the clean look of black on white, and it makes the lettering easy to read. Here's another project I'm working on. It's a Morse code keyer using an ATtiny85 microcontroller assembly, a twin T oscillator, and an LM386 audio amplifier. The potentiometers are used to control the speed, tone, and volume of the code. And of course, the printed circuit boards came from PCB Way and are top quality. But that's a different project for a different video. Let's get back to the solar charge controller and power supply to be used for the weather station. Here are the two versions side by side. The earlier version on the left has the CN3795 charge controller in the center, but the newer version has it on the left. The earlier version has two 1117 regulators, one on each side of the CN3795, and the later version has two Mini 360 regulators on the right and room for a third. The newer version also has removable LEDs to indicate voltage output from the Mini 360s. I enjoy prototyping circuits on solderless spreadboards, especially when I can combine the convenience of a development platform like this RPI Pico Pack. The Pico Pack has a built-in jack that accepts a 2.1 mm plug from any wall wart that outputs from 6 to 15 volts DC. A Mini 360 switching buck converter reduces the input down to 5 volts based on the setting of a small potentiometer. Once set, the pot seems to hold its position quite well. The Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller is plugged into the Pico Pack, and it, in turn, is plugged into the solderless breadboards. All the IOs on the Pico are then accessible on the breadboards. The Pico has a built-in converter to regulate the 5 volts from the Mini 360 down to 3.3 volts for its own use and to power the peripherals. The yellow wires carry the 3.3 volts. The black wires are connected to a common ground for the Pico and all connected circuitry. There are a total of eight pins on the Pico that are common grounds. The green and white wires are I-squared C leads. The SCL clock leads are white and the SDA data leads are green. The display is an SSD 1306 OLED and it has 128 columns and 64 rows of pixels. It is an I-squared C device. The BME-280 sensor is capable of sensing temperature and atmospheric pressure. It is also I-squared C. I'm using its pressure reading, but not the temperature. The GY-30 is a light sensor, and its output is in lux. The range is from less than 1 lux to more than 54,000. It, too, is an I-squared C device. 
The DWT-22 is a three-pin device that outputs the temperature in Celsius and the humidity in percent. I'm using both outputs in my circuit. The 10K resistor is part of the DWT-22 circuitry. It's a pull-up for the output pin and connects from pin 2 to the 3.3 volt power bus. Of course, there's much more to come for the weather station. I'll add a rain gauge and wind gauges. Fortunately, there are plenty of IOs still available on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Certainly, I want Wi-Fi capability, and a major advantage of the ESP8266 is that it has built-in Wi-Fi. Notice the copper trace on the end of the board. That is the Wi-Fi antenna. But what will I do about Wi-Fi if I use the Raspberry Pi Pico, you might be thinking? And that's certainly a valid question. Fortunately, there is now a version of the Pico that includes Wi-Fi capability. Here's a photo of one showing the metal cover that protects the Wi-Fi circuitry. As you can see, it has the same pinout as the earlier non-Wi-Fi version, so it is entirely usable in the RPi Pico Pack. Well, that's enough for this video. Thanks for watching. And remember one thing, I'm not Chuck.